Hi, I'm Laurie Kleitmans. I'm the curator of contemporary art at the Central Museum. And I'm standing next to Rory Pilgrim, artist and composer. And Rory is creating a beautiful solo exhibition at Automated Spirits. And today we felt it was a good moment to actually step out and also go into the surroundings of this beautiful estate. We're standing in front of the Marquisenbos, and inside the Marquisenbos is the Marquise tree. And this tree is 220 years old. In 2022, this tree was elected as the tree of the year. And this was quite a symbolic vote against the expansion of the highway. And this individual tree reminded me a lot of how you are working, Rory, and how the community can embrace a tree or how a tree can play an important role in the community. When working with people a lot, actually, these, having a particular tree which you relate to has followed me over the years. So within the second film within the exhibition, The Resounding Bell, there is a moment also where one of the women takes or wanted the young people to go and visit this particular tree, which she called the Mother Tree. And then in Rafts, a film made in 2022, that also uh, many of the people within that film took me to their favourite tree. In a way, it also had me thinking about the role of climate change in your work, and especially the last couple of years. I think this has been sort of a growing issue that you are addressing. From 2019, I really felt that every work that I made, it was impossible not to have the climate crisis in the background. But I'm interested in how it affects every single aspect of our lives. So in Raft, there is more of a subtle connection between mental health, care support structures, and how that also then just relates to nature or the environment and the world as a support structure, which is inherent for us to live healthy lives. The tree also reminds me of how in the resounding bell you return to the seventh generation principle, a Native American principle that makes you think about all the decisions that we're making today. I suppose, yeah, a recurring theme is thinking about this seventh generational thinking so my understanding of it, it's really about how do you make a decision in the here and now about the present, but what effect will that have? So in some generational thinking, that is maybe quantifiable as a period of 140 years. But I'm also interested what happens if you have seven generations involved in that. Within Resounding Bell, you have a dialogue which takes place from, I think the youngest member is 14 years old, all the way up until 93 years old. And when we make decisions, and also just politically, I'm very interested in structures which really listen to the voices of all of those different experiences of age and time. Collaborating with different generations and the intergenerational dialogue is something that actually recurs throughout your work and with a particular interest also in young people and taking what they are saying very seriously. The oldest work in the exhibition is from 2010, Can We Leave Things As They Are? It was this time just after the financial crash and I think um, there was a new wave of right-wing governments across Europe, but you could see as the practice of austerity. And in the first instance, this really affected young people. And I wanted to create a dialogue which also reflected on these different sort of generational experiences of change. And when maybe a particular generation has more means to be able to create change, just in the sense of like, under the age of 18 in many countries you can't vote. So I'm always gaining inspiration or trying to learn from this practice of seventh generational dialogue as a way in forming how do you actually create decisions and the effect that will have and the resonances and implications it spans across different generations. The exhibition that we've compiled for Automated Spirit consists of works, drawings, installations, films, sketchbooks, from the past 15 years and those are actually also the 15 years that you have been residing in the Netherlands and in preparing you've been talking a lot also in, in how shifts in politics has been really informing your works and also how you've been yeah, thinking about this exhibition. It's also quite an interesting experience looking back at work which is also 15 years and there's definitely things where I look back and think oh it does not resonate in the yeah. same way 
for good or bad? Do you decide not to show it? Do you show it? Is it something to learn from? So this question of time and what speaks in the here and now, and maybe there's something which is quite difficult in the past, which feels not right now. So this feeling of how something resonates, I suppose, is a recurring theme again. And that's why bells, but it's something that I come back to. And what does this bell mean to you? Can you explain this a bit? Well, I come from the UK where we're used to this sort of big bell tradition where it's one big bell which resonates and is meant to speak for the collective. But actually, in the Netherlands, you have this more Lon tradition where it's individual bells which make up a melody. And within my work in total, I'm interested in how an individual speaks and is given space. And that to me is more important than a collective voice. It's how does someone speak within the collective? And a bell is a bit of a symbol within that. In the Central Museum, we've been following your work for, for quite some time and shown the undercurrent, the film, individual drawings. But now this wide scope of media that you work in is all coming together in, in the exhibition with Automelis Weert. And I was wondering, can you say something about the wide variety of media that you work in? For me, it's a bit like always how to cultivate a garden. So my most natural way of expressing myself is through music or through songwriting. But I also make drawings and I'm interested in how uh, things come together to sort of nurture one another. So a bit like permaculture, you would never have just a monocrop to be able to create a healthy soil. You have things which speak and nurture one another. There's nearly two hours of film work within just this one exhibition. But yeah, it's it's made up of the voices of many people and I feel very lucky to be able to bring that together. Yeah, like the exhibition has really become this garden where in the first yeah, seeds that you planted 15 years ago are now like these strong beacons of works and ideas and in a way have become this multitude as well. Like all the new plants and flowers that have been joining you in this garden. Yeah, and I suppose a bit like a tree over time. We know something which did start off as maybe a small little drawing in a sketchbook became a tree in the form of work. And how does that speak to where we are today?